All right, I'll have another video continuing the OS dev a little bit here. Probably do some, uh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I think I'll try and do making a directory, if not changing a directory on this one. Just to close out my weekend here, doing something to stimulate the old brain stem on today's whatever we're doing today. So uh, I might start a little bit a little bit light with the kernel thing. I don't think I'll make a read elf, which is just printing the info that currently prints out, but I will probably just put all the elf code into the header that I made from the kernel, and that could be done simply by adding another parameter, which I didn't think of until later, of course, but that is all right. So when I'm loading the elf file, this thing, this void pointer function here, where I'm getting the entry point, if we determine the magic bytes are such for an elf, I'm going to load that sucker up here. But as part of that, I have a buffer that I malloc for the actual program itself, separate from the buffer that is allocated before this function is called. So I, I get the whole file into a buffer and then I read it, it's an elf, I take all the program header sections from that file and I put it into another buffer that's allocated according to how many bytes all of the program sections need, or the program headers, and then I just, all the ones that are loadable, that is. And then I calculate whatever their offset is according to their original file buffer, and I keep that same offset where I put them into the new file buffer, and then the entry point is also at its own relative offset, and we jump to it. But part of that is including a buffer that is allocated here at runtime, and I kind of want to have that be part of this function here so it doesn't have to all be in the kernel it can be separate and be a little bit better situated there so i'm going to have another pointer here and i'll just call it the same thing an exe buffer that i'm going to load the exe into before we run it and get the entry point and all that good stuff so that way if i pass it in i can say hey we can do everything in here this will all work the same except the only difference is at the top as a global variable we can get rid of that buffer there so when I go to load the elf file, I do need to change the, uh, what do we call this? The definition, the declaration for the function, the procedure interface, if you're in other languages. And we have this here, and I'll make another thing here. We'll say I have buffer. I can call it the same thing. That's all right. Shadowing variables is all right. And we'll pass that in here. And we'll fill that out. So on return, it should be okay, because it is... A pointer this is passed by value so maybe I need to fill that in but we'll return the entry point anyway so that'll be okay um, but by doing that I take this variable out of the global space and I can just probably move that function into the elf header which I just put here even though putting code as part of it isn't great but that's all right I'm just gonna try to just copy the whole thing over there and see what else we need of course We'll just, we'll just load an elf file there. So this will have other stuff, you know, specific to my operating system. It won't just be type definitions. We all, we'll also need some other things here. If I want to load it from a separate header file like memset, that needs string. And I'm using null, so I need the standard def file as well. Okay, and I'm using malloc in here, so I'll, I'll, I will also need that, which is, I don't remember, memory malloc, that's what it was. Okay, I don't think I need anything else for that, but if I want to include all the elf stuff, that's included in the kernel, and now I don't have to call it, but only in this one place where I'm loading the file. So I can probably remove that from the global space as well, because it's going to be within this header that's now included. Okay, just trying for a better separation of concerns here, really. So, we'll go out. Actually, let me go back and see if it builds, and it doesn't, because I'm freeing a buffer that doesn't exist anymore, which is probably not great. Did you mean write buffer? No. I forgot I did that. Okay, so we do need to probably keep track of the buffer here. Let's put this above that point. Say so buffer to hold, loaded, executable. That way it's outside of these functions and we can have it after they're all done. That'll be all right. I can probably do some of this stuff 
outside of here too, because I'm going to have some duplication if we do PE files later on. Okay, but that now loads, so that's good. That compiles and runs, so I just want to make sure everything still runs. If I run the test, that works. If I reboot, that still works. All right. If I run the calculator again, 10 plus 2, it'll load and say everything. It, it does 12, it returns. I should be able to load it interactively, and I can't. So maybe I broke something again. Probably did. <laughs> Might be virtue of that being a pointer returned from the function, but that's okay. We do have to free the code, but that's why I passed that in there. Let's see, so I can do this. We have the calculator there. Maybe it just doesn't work interactively. Oh, sometimes it does. Okay, I don't know what the difference would be there. Maybe if I like run things. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Seems to be with malloc, which makes sense because I have some weird malloc stuff going on. Probably resetting and setting these values here. Because I do save them. Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably do this outside of this function. So I save off the current values. We're doing that. We run the stuff. Probably just care about getting the entry point, really. And I could all do this after, could do all of this after this point, actually. Then we free the malloc, and then we reset the malloc, free the buffer, free the file, that seems okay. So the only other issue would be this entry point that I'm calling down here, so that I can also make just outside of here. Let's say entry point of executable. Okay, so then no matter what we have for this, if we get a PE file, I'll return the entry point. If we get an ELF, I'll return it. If we get a flat binary, I might just set it equal to the start of the buffer where the EXE is in the future for that, but... Um, I don't know if that'll change anything. Maybe the compiler will change its optimizations and make things work a little better. Probably not. Probably be just as bad. But if I go into here, I can do that. That doesn't break yet. If I reboot again, I don't think it'll break. Maybe it will. 200, 200, and then... Run it for plus five, four times three minus one. I don't know, just something there. 211. Okay, that seems to work. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that changed the code around to where malloc's a little better because I'm doing stuff slightly differently. I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to move that into the ELF file and I did that. So that's all I was really wanting to do there. You know, change elf file so it's in the other file. We could make a read elf thing to not print all the info every time a file is loaded. But anyway, during this video, what I actually want to do is do like make or change directory stuff. So I'll try and and work that in. Those will be commands. I kind of wanted to make commands a little bit different as well. Insofar as right now, you know, they're just static strings here anyway, and I have unused variables I can remove. I'll keep the Windows message. <laughs> uh, some other things I'm not using, like needed pages, apparently is not used anywhere. Let's just remove that warning now, but all these, all these commands are just right here static, so I figure I'll make like an array of these instead, and then we can have an array of function pointers, and the commands offset within the array can be the offset to a function pointer in a different array, and then we can call the function, so... I kind of want to move towards that. Maybe I don't want to do that right now and think about how it's going to work. But, like, directory command, it would be a little better, you know, probably performance-wise than just doing if checks everywhere, and the code would be cleaner if I just moved all these things into their own functions, and then they would all be called by just an offset into an array to a function pointer. Probably would be better at runtime. 
We still do the string comparisons, but it'd be part of an array. But I don't know if I want to do that right now, so... <laughs> I want to be able, well, I need to fix the graphics test as well. I want to be able to make a directory and probably change directories. So we'll probably do that. Um, hmm, but it would be better if I were to make these into functions. So, hmm. uh, well, what's the next worst thing? We can just do both <laughs> so I can have an array. Uh, move all commands to this array. So we'll, we'll do this. You know, we'll have character pointer. These will be commands or shell commands or something. We'll say it's going to be commands. And, you know, we'll have an array of character pointers here. And we can just put them implicitly on the stack. And that'll be all right. And, you know, there'll be directory and the other things here. So I want to make something to make a directory. So I'll say MK directory. So Mortal Kombat, right? Although in the future, I might do something where we could implement it as an alias, possibly an alias system, where, where one command name equals, you know, an actual, another command. But on, uh, on OS 400, you know, that I use for work, uh, there's some cool ways of interacting with the system and finding what's available. They have like a, an overall command that's like a wrapper for all the system commands. And you can do like go command command name. So if we had something like to display a file, that could be under, you know, go command display, which it looks a little jank, but what that does is bring up a menu of everything that basically starts with DSP. So maybe eventually I can do that for better command discovery, or, I mean, on Unix there's not that much, right? You say, you know, under whatever user bin there's going to be some stuff, and you can just look in there as well. So I don't know. But I thought that was interesting and a, a unique way to handle sort of user discovery of what's available to, to use. Um, so instead of make directory, I'd have something like create directory and then an overall command, which would be like, you know, search create or something or have autocomplete and it would show everything that starts with CRT for creation commands. But that might be far in the future. I don't know. But I'm familiar with make directory or MD, so I'll probably do a make directory command, we'll say. Um, and then we'll have functions for that, so that'll be function pointers. I don't know what I want to return from those, maybe just an int or some kind of error code. You know, if I'm looking at command directory, this is an if statement, this doesn't return anything. Although an if returns, you know, a boolean kind of implicitly. So we could just start off by doing bools, maybe. If I go back to where I was, so maybe I'll do, I'll do that. Because that's easy enough. Then we can check if the command failed or not by just checking the return condition. We can say bool, I don't know, command funks, command functions. I'll just do that. I'll have an array of those, but it needs to be a pointer to a function, so we'll have to do this, I believe. No, it needs to be in there. I mean, right now we can say it won't take anything. This is an array of an array of pointers to functions that return booleans, that take in no arguments. And we can just have a static array of, of this, right? So for example, if the first thing is going to be make directory, I can have a function that says, you know, make directory. It'll be, it'll be a function. And that function would be boolean. We'd have to define it at the top, I'm assuming. Or we'd at least have to define it somewhere before it's actually used. Uh, we can see if this works. We'll say we have make directory, and I'll just put this like at the bottom, or really I could put it within our file system. That probably would work better. Impl, the impl file there. That way it would be before this point in this code, and then I wouldn't have to define it outside of this function in the global namespace. It'd be in the header. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So we'll have fs impl. I'll uh, just put it at the bottom. Ah, oh, see, I was going to make a directory anyway. Ha! Huh. So that's all right. I called it fs make make dir. That's that's fine. I'll just put a thing here. Note um, all commands here should have their own functions at the we'll say at the same offset in the command functions array below. 
When I say should, we'll say need. Oh, didn't want to do that. Need to have their own functions at the same exact same array offset or element and the command functions array below. All right, that's a note to myself. Otherwise, I'm liable to forget that. So if make directories at zero, this needs to be a zero within this array, right? Okay. And I'm still making the dot and dot dot. That's all right. So that's given a path. So I can't do with void, which is annoying. So maybe I don't want to do it like this, or I need like an overall struct. I wanted this to be a little bit better. <laughs> uh, maybe commands in the kernel for the shell can have, can take nothing, but other things need to take in like a path. It depends. Hmm. I guess, to be honest, all the shell commands, I can pass in argc and argv if I want, or an argument vector of sorts, which would be an array of strings, which would be character pointers. So I could say they all take in character pointers right now, which means I can't do that constant unless I make it constant everywhere. Uh, it's a work in progress, we'll just say that. I'll start with something and we'll iterate as we go. So this returns an inode. I guess I never wrote it to begin with, <laughs> so that's all right. Uh, interesting, I don't have the to-do, oh yeah, I do. So what did I want to do this? would use. I mean, I could just return a boolean. I could return an inode for the directory that's created. I'm not sure what I want to do with this function right now. Which I thought I had something else there. Oh, that's in buffer 5. Of course, it went up to 5. Okay. So data blocks directories will be that. We could return an inode from this. Maybe I don't want to do commands like this because it's just not going to work. <laughs> so maybe, maybe never mind. It's not C compliant, but I can cast everything to a void pointer and cast it back when I use it. So technically I don't need to have an array of similar function pointers, but it's a lot easier if I just do this because it's a simple offset and a call. Well, we can get inode from path later if I need to actually, so I could just make it return a boolean. Because I can always call get, get inode from path, right? thought I had something like that. Is it just... It's just inode from path, yeah. So I can call that if I give it the path. I can do that later, so... Okay. So if I make a boolean... Uh, we need to make sure the path is alright, and I had that when I'm checking this. So... So I figure... Okay. Does this have open? It doesn't. If I'm calling open, I need to include that. Which would be under sys and syscall wrappers. That way I have access to open and co within this header file. So that's more coupling, which is not necessarily great. I have any errors so far? You know I do. Incompatible types, yes. Incompatible types. Warning, unused variable, that's fine. Okay. So FD, I think, is... Uh, is it in 32? Is it? I don't know. Probably not. Is it even in here? It'd be the ID for something in the open file table. So it should be an int32, the way I have it laid out. All right, so assuming that would work, we'll do open, and we'll open whatever the path is at. The path that's passed in for the flags, I'm going to say create and write only. I guess when I'm creating initially the directory, we can make it only, only writable, not readable. That's fair. It'll be empty. We don't really need to read it at the moment if we're just making it. So that seems to be all right. And we can have issues. If it's less than zero, I'll just return false. Uh, that should be all right. So we need the inode, which I can get inode from path if I'm doing it like this. So I'm making, I'm going to make a blank file, which by default has a file type of file type file or whatever the enum is, which I have, that's buffer six. 
Or no. I didn't make it an enum. I could make it an enum, though. Enum would probably be better here. Instead of using defines everywhere. Alright. They'd auto-increment, but we'll just do that anyway. So by default, it'll be file type file when I make a new file. Yeah, <laughs> so what I can do is just make a new one by creating it. If it worked, then it worked. We have an inode. I want to get the inode for that, and I can change the the attributes within the inode, such as the file type, um, which I could make it this enum, but that would take up more than one byte. That's why I made it a un8. Okay. So I have an inode. We'll have, I'll say, directory inode equals the inode we just made, which is inode from path, which takes in the path. Um, go back to where I was in the jump list. Nope, doesn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, which is the path we just made, so okay. So we'll say create new empty default file. Change file type of new file to directory. I can do that here by changing the type attribute there. So directory inode.type can equal file type directory because it'll be technically a directory. Uh, get the parent directory inode as well. We can do that. That'll be whatever folder this is currently within. Which be inode, what do they call that? Parent inode from path. Wow. I actually had. Decent naming on some things, nice. I already wrote the logic out, so I didn't have to think through it this episode. <laughs> Which is nice. Changed it to directory. Um, and then I need to write to that file, because there's no data within it right now. Um, open. The open system call up here will have allocated... 4 kilobytes by default, which is fine. That's one disk block that'll hold up to... If it, for a directory... It'll hold um, 64 directory entries. So we're not going to hit the limit in here unless we make a bun bunch of files by default. But if I'm just adding two for the current and the parent directory, which is why I got the parent inode, thank you past self, then we can work with that pretty easily. So we'll say writes default directory entries. And eventually I, I kind of don't want to do this. Like plan nine, for example, doesn't need these to be in the file itself. It's the dot and dot dot entries are determined from a path when you evaluate it. So eventually I do want to get rid of the need for these probably to make things simpler, take up less space in a few places, um, and hopefully be more hopefully be more streamlined. Right now I'm still using them explicitly, but that's all right. Uh, so we can do this by writing to the file. Since we have fd and we have open, we can probably call write and write to the file here, given a directory entry. So directory entry t, say directory entry, and I can just plop it on the stack here probably and be all right. So the name will be dot, and we need the ID as well. The inode ID will be whatever this one is, which is where we created it. So we get the inode here, so we can use that. So directory inode ID. The name can be dot, because that would refer to itself, and then we can write that. So yeah, I can write to this, which would just be fd up here. I want to write from the directory entry and the size of a directory entry. Since this is not a pointer, I can just use that itself. Assuming that returns okay. I should probably check the return value, but that's all right. Um, given that... We have a dot. We can also make this dot dot, which would be mem copy or string copy, but this is fine. We can do mem copy. So into directory entry, let's say not into that, into dot name, the address of that, the name portion of the directory entry, which it only has. I'll write that B6. So Trying to show things, trying to make these a little bit more... Isolated is not the right word. Not idempotent. Um, what would be the right phrase to use here? I guess easier to follow along, which is never the case with me because my brain's scatterbrained all the time because I had coffee earlier. But 
I'm trying, if I go through and like watch these videos later from like a user or a viewer perspective, I want to see, okay, do I actually explain what's going on in the context of the overall system and to where you don't need to understand everything that came before? Cause there's going to be like thousands of videos in this playlist, but <laughs> maybe in 10 years, I don't know. Uh, but for example, here I'm like, should I explain what the directory entry looks like? Because you know, you don't know what it looks like. You're just, I'm pulling these names out of the other right now. So a directory entry is 64 bytes. I just have an ID for an inode that it can correspond to, and I have the name. So I'm just filling out the name with dot and dot dot. The ID corresponds to the inode for the directory that's gonna be created. The parent inode would be for the folder that contains this new directory, the directory containing this directory. So that's where the dot dot will refer to, but the name will be dot dot instead of just one singular you know, period here. Um, and mem copy is destination, source, and length, I think. That's in string.h. I could use, I really should use memcopy32 instead of the regular one, or just make it implicitly use that everywhere, overload it or something. But yeah, that's source and length. Because four bytes at a time is going to be more performant, but that's fine. So this will be two, except actually it'll be three with the null byte, so I'll do that just in case. And we'll write that as well, but that ID needs to be different. So write default entries for dot, dot, dot. So dot equals this directory itself. Dot, dot equals parents directory, which contains this new directory. So the ID is going to be the parents inode ID which we got the parent inode here. And it's containing directories inode. I don't need to put these as comments, but that's fine. Or dot and dot dot directory entries. I guess that, that provides some context as to why I do this immediately before. And we also have to change the type there anyway. But okay, we do that, we write it to the file. We set the parent inode, we write that to the file. I'm not sure what else I have to do here. We're adding appending data to it, so that should be all right. So write will end up calling read write sectors and not load or save file, I don't think. No, because I'm not doing a specific address. So hopefully this works, I don't know. I do need to update the inode data on disk. Um, the parent inode, I need to update its data on disk as well, probably, because it has an extra directory entry now. So I probably should do that. I don't know if it'll make it from open. Open would call create file, given a path. So we're getting the parent of the path, and we're, we should be writing to that, actually. I do have update inode on disk. Okay, that's also what I was looking for. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm trying to see if, if I just make the file with open there, my open system call does end up, if the file doesn't exist, it'll end up calling create file, so. I'm just trying, I was trying to remember um, if that updated the parent inode's data, and it does, it does right here. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. But this, this new inode, I am updating its data blocks and its file type, so I should update that on disk. So update inode uh, for, for new directory on disk. So we'll do that. The new inode would be the directory inode from this function. And I should also update the current or root inodes if this one is for that or is contained within there. So that is also at um, in create file, at least at the bottom of this function, from what I remember. Yeah, I'm doing this. I can make this in a separate function and abstract it too, but that's all right. So in case this new file or new directory was added to the current inode, I need that to be updated. So on screen or in the, in the OS, you know, if we make a directory and it's in the current one, I need to update that. Or if it's in the root, I need to update that. I probably should have this be implicit as part of other things, but 
So I don't have to do it here, but that's all right. So given we made a new one, uh, we'll probably need to update the super block. I mean, that's from create file, so that's okay. So we'll probably be behind make directory, yes. Given a file path, yep. Okay, I'm not sure what else I would need to do for this. It's pretty short, but that doesn't mean it'll work. But we'll see. I don't have a change directory command. I do want to do that. Which is why I had that immediately following this. But we'll see what happens. Right now, I get warnings for unused variables. That's true. Um, let me make sure this is all up there so my face isn't covering it. Uh, I can probably move it over, actually. I'll move that over here. So I can have everything on screen at once. All right. So in the kernel for the commands and the command functions that I'm not using right now, I guess where I go to command, like directory and all that, let's change this to first, you know, to do, say move all, commands to commands and uh, functions array. But in lieu of doing that, we'll check for all this after checking the array that I just made up here, this stuff. If I copy that, we'll see, you know, we need to check through these things to see if what they entered was what we want to run, which is going to be in argv0, the name of the command. So we'll have i, and I don't have um, an array macro, do I? Probably not. So I have that equal to zero, it'll be less than the number of elements in whatever array we're checking. So that would be size of commands over size of, we can do star commands or we can do commands offset by zero. Either way, they both equal the same thing really. And then I'll have something like this if statement here for comparison. I probably should make another function or macro to do to do this, but look better. <laughs> make like string equals or string matches, which does this, but then I don't have to, you know, remember and have it be bug prone if I forget the order or the length or whatnot, but that's okay. So if argv0, according to the command that we're checking, which is commands i, and string length for that, if it's zero, or if it equals, it doesn't matter. Then we found the command and we want to call the associated function. So this is given a path. The path would be the second argument as opposed to the first one, which is the, the command to call. So if I called make directory and I don't give it anything, that's not good. But if I call it and I give it a path, you know, say wherever we're currently at, then we'll have a folder, you know, folder A file, or this would be a different folder. Well, if we go into another folder, We'll say we're going to make this folder, right? So this would be this whole thing. After make directory is going to be an argument. Make directory itself is the first argument. It would be argv0 here. This would be the second argument for the path. So I would call the command function here, given that second argument. But I can see that some commands would have more than one. So I'll probably end up renaming this to like commands one arg or something and have different functions depending on how many arguments they have. That's kind of jank though, but that's something to think about for the future. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Functinos will call command functions i, and we'll call it given, well, we'll say, I guess I'll say if. If it doesn't work, it's bad, but anyway. If command functions i, we'll pass it argv i, or argv1 rather. Um, if that works, then we're good. If it doesn't work, we're not good. So if that works, we'll just continue, I guess. Well, actually, if it doesn't work, I'll print an error. Put error command failed. <laughs> command percent %s failed. And this will be argv0. Okay, and that's if it finds it. Um, yeah, if it doesn't work, we'll do that. Else, 
or well, regardless, I'll just do continue. Yeah, I'll put this within braces. That just better. That's better. So if it finds the command, I want to continue. And by continue, I mean probably break. We'll know this had worked. Uh, let's do bool found command. This is a bad way of doing it, but it's because C doesn't have labels to break with for loops. And I don't know, I don't feel like using a go-to right now. So if we found it, we found it. If it doesn't run, we'll print an error. Um, but else we found it, and I'll do break, and we'll say if found command will continue. Okay, not great, but that's all right. Else we'll go on and check the other commands because they're not part of the array and the yeah the array setup and everything. Okay, but that should be all right. I should probably have a a check here, if not path return false because we do need to check that the path is valid but I'm not sure what else I need to do so we can see if that makes a command or not and what else I have to fix for compile errors variable set but not used well I do it right there oh um, yeah need it need it outside of the loop if I want to use it outside of the loop duh that usually helps but okay so we have this stuff here. This is just the default, you know, my root directory setup. So if I make uh, a, a different directory, directory A, I should probably print a new line before I go back. That would be good. But if I do clear screen, it'll clear it. If I do directory again, hey, I made a directory. It's called directory A. It is a directory. By default, it has nothing in it, I think is why I do that. That's the size. We probably should update the size. That would probably be good. Um, but it did make the directory, so that's actually, I'm surprised that that worked. <laughs> probably shouldn't be, but I am. Uh, that's all right. Um, yeah, I could print a new line, I suppose. I'll print one there as well, in case we have an error. So we'll just do, I guess I'll just do print F and print a new line. Or I can have... I probably should change to have my prompt, like, print a new line every time. That would probably be better, but oh well. Uh, let's do already found and ran command uh, loop for next user input. All right. Yeah, I probably should do that. So at the top here, I'm printing the prompt, right? But it doesn't have anything there, so we can do a new line. I'll change that to be more C compliant. We can do a new line there when we print it out. That'll be all right. So that way, maybe I don't have to do this. That might break some other things, though. So it does print, you know, below again <laughs> every time I do something, but that's all right. Test. Can I do an underscore? Oh, I don't have an underscore. Interesting. I thought I had one. I mean, I'm printing, you know, the cursor, but all right. That's all right. We still make test test directory. Okay. So we'll have some extra new, extra new lines sometimes, but that's all right. We can work around that as we get to it. I think that would be better to just print a new line with the prompt every time. I think that's, that's a little bit better UX in my opinion. So now I'm trying to see where the initial extra line prints, and I don't know. <laughs> Probably from the menu string. Because that ends with a couple new lines. Don't need to end with a null. String literals are already ended with nulls. Uh, I'll have one new line there. So it'll print like an initial new line. That's all right. Or we could include it with the prompt. That'd be kind of jank. That would be another way to do it, but no, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, so other than that, what do I want to do? Let's make sure that looks a little bit better first. I want to set the size when I make the directory. That's what I wanted to do. Because when I do that, oh, test is not there. That's interesting. Did not make a new one. 
Maybe because I called it test, tester. That one worked. I can't make directory test. What if I do it twice? What if I clear and then do it? That's interesting. Test two. So I can't just call it test. I don't know why that is. Um, it might have something to do with prefixes. I might be getting the, the inode in the path wrong. If something already starts with test or it finds something that starts with test that doesn't work. I don't know. That's a bug I should probably look into. Probably need to look into that. Um, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do the implementation, which I don't have here because why would I? Oh, five. B5. I need to quit ending lines with a bunch of white space. I just do that when I move it up so my camera doesn't block it. But um, I do need to set the size. The size would be the inode sort of directory entries here. That's the default size for this directory. So that would be the directory inode dot size, I believe. Um, I think, yeah, I have the size in bytes. Size in sectors I don't really need since I can compute that. So later on I might remove this field. But right now I'm just going to update the size. So size in bytes would be the size of the directory entries. We'll do the type itself times two, since I wrote, you know, two initial directories, directory entries for this file and its parent. And we can have the size and sectors, which will be, should call it, yeah, bytes to sectors of size and bytes. Okay, and then when we update it, the size should be updated to whatever the default is. 128, because it's 64 times 2. Right, so by default, right, this is 640. That should include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 files, well, 10 directory entries per directory or file. And each one of these is 64 bytes long in the directory entry for the name and the ID. So 10 times 64 is 640. So I make a directory, test directory, that should be, there we go, 128, so that's the size. So that is updated correctly, I like that. Are reboots broken? Of course they are, why wouldn't they be? That's not good. <laughs> I did update the size though, do I have to update some other things? Probably, maybe because these are bad. I broke directory entries again, dang it. Or I broke my uh, my reboots again. I just fixed that too. <laughs> I feel like when it's I when I I feel like it's from when I create a file. So syscall open. If it doesn't exist, it calls create file. If it has the o create flag, so I know that calls create file. And that gets the file name at the end of the path, and it updates the bits. So I feel like the bits probably aren't correct or something. Because usually when I reboot and it doesn't work, that's because the bits aren't correct. But yes, that doesn't... Oh, wait, no, I can type in. Interesting. So I can still type. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> I feel like the bits aren't correct when I do that. But I can check. I feel like that's that's something that I should do. This doesn't have this does have standard I/O. Okay. But we can do our good old friend printf debugging. We can say first data bit because this would determine what data block that the new file is being written to. So I kind of want to make sure that that's all right. I'll just have that be like this be the first free data bit rather 
And really, I don't think I can do that from this function unless it's like at the top. Oh, we do have super block as a global. Maybe that's also bad. Add it to do as well. Thought I did this. Yeah, I already have an update function for that. Cool, forgot I did that. That's nice. <laughs> Get rid of one to do that's already done. Yeah, so this takes where the inode is, takes the, the ID in that inode and updates it in the inode blocks according to that ID number. So that's good, but uh, yeah, anyway. I just wanna see as a sanity check where it's writing this stuff before and after it makes the file. So it'll make the file here. So we could just say, you know, where did it write before and after directly? See what that does, make directory test directory 51 and then 52. So that's updating okay. But see, this breaks, right? That shouldn't break. But it does. I feel like that's overriding parts of the kernel now, which it shouldn't be. But when I make everything what do I have? I have 48 blocks, sans the boot block, so implicitly that's plus 2, which is 50 for make disk, and then the root directory should be 1, so it's 51. So the first free bit should be at 51, that's correct. And then the second one. But I feel like that's overriding parts of the kernel, because the kernel's not loading correctly. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. That's what I changed last time for this stuff. The number of data blocks and the bits. I can see if that's the issue by just incrementing these by one. I just don't like doing that. Because it's jank, and I don't know if that's the issue. Because I'd rather know why it breaks rather than just be able to do this and have it work. I'd rather know why it breaks or doesn't. Let's do test directory, so 52 and 53, we have it at the bottom. Yeah, so it's something to do with, <laughs> on initial boot, wherever the kernel's located, it takes up more blocks than it should, or I'm overriding it unnecessarily. Adding one here should not affect it, so something is incorrect or the kernel's bigger than it's reported to be, or something. I feel that's, I feel like that's when I'm writing the data blocks initially. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but these are just directory entries. That's um, 64, 128, writing the files. That's all less than one block. I'm padding to the whole block, which would be num files. Plus two for these two entries, so I think that's all right. And then the actual data is offset by two because I'm not writing entries for boot sector second stage. I'm getting their size in blocks, which the kernel is 12. So it's getting that in sectors until the end of the file. And then I'm filling out to the end of the last block, assuming that's there. So that should be all right. Maybe this is incorrect or something because I'm filling out nulls there, but it works on first boot because that resets the system and then that fills out. So the kernel works, but then if I don't add one to the first free bit, it overwrites the kernel somehow. I don't know why that would happen. That doesn't make sense to me. Because <laughs> we get how big the kernel is when we're writing the data itself. We're writing all the sectors. Yeah, so that should be reinitialized every time. That's not static though, but that's fine. It's ref reading a sector from there into sector, which is just set to empty. And then I reset it for the next file after anyway. I wonder if I should do that every time. 
Well, no, that wouldn't matter because we're only getting the number of bytes anyway. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I need to debug this a lot and see why I have to add extra bits for this because I feel like I shouldn't need to do that and that's it's not right, but it makes it work. But I'm just, what calculation do I need to do to determine this, right? If that's what I should be doing. I'll get rid of the debug info there. Um, I mean, one thing I noticed was that for the number of data bits, this needs to be one off anyway, because the first bitmap block, at a minimum, I'm going to have the boot block, the super block, and one block for inode bitmaps, one block for data bitmaps, one block for inodes, and then the data blocks. And that's what I kind of... Um, what I somewhat calculated before down here. So boot block, super block, inode bitmap, data bitmap, inode and data. So at minimum, this would be one, two, three, four, five. Five blocks before the number of data blocks. And that would mean this calculation is not correct because the first bitmap block uh, minus the number of inode would be minus one, and this would be at after the inode bitmaps. So this would be at four, right? So it would be data blocks minus four. Well, I can print out what this is actually. I feel like this is one off, but I don't know if that one off would correspond to the the issue that I'm having down there. I don't know. I have my regular regular printf, not my OS's, so I can use U here. Just differentiate that a little bit. Mm, okay, 356, total block 60. So that's wrong by one. But why is that? Boot block, super block, inode bitmaps. Oh, and then zero base data bitmaps. That'd be at three minus one would be four. I need to subtract another one. So we have the first bitmap block here. Need to do another another one at minimum here. So this would be total disk blocks minus boot block plus super block plus inode bit. Okay, at minimum this would be you know, five blocks, right? So it should be 355, not 356. That's that's the only reason I'm, I'm harping on this. That'll be a little more correct, but I don't think that's the issue with this being one off or not. So I don't know, but I can, I can check by removing that. And it probably will not work since I removed that, but you know, I got to check. So tech, text, test directory. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, I don't know why this has to be added to one, but technically make directory works. It just kind of breaks other things, which is not great. I'll add another to do since I got removed. I removed one. I have to add one back, you know, find why this needs one extra right now. Maybe more later how to correctly calculate this. Sometimes making new files seems to overwrite part of the kernel or otherwise break booting the kernel. So I don't know why. I'll have to research that later. But make directory, I mean, technically it kind of works, right? So that's okay. I'll have test A and we can reboot. And then it works. So can I run the test? Run test. Can I reboot after that? 
Uh, yeah, I can, and that works all right. And I can still do that. And what else? Just for curiosity's sake, I have that many blocks. Okay, well, uh, you know, you fix one or two bugs and you find more. That's just that's just how it works because they they just multiply. So that's okay. I consider that to be a make directory command at a basic level. Change directory would be good to have as well, so we can try that. Which is just setting where the current directory is at as far as the inodes and the strings and evaluating the path, it looks like. So we can try to do that. Set new current directory string value as well. Okay. So I can try to do that as well. Uh, to round out the video right, so make directory, let's do change directory, which would be cd or chdir. If we want to go real old school and to match make directory, I guess I'll do that. We'll have change directory there for that command. And that is in, or well, I'll put that in, the implementation function. So we'll do change uh, current directory. At the end, we'll return true if possible, but I will say this will be change directory instead of make directory, given a path. And again, we can say if not path, return false. So we need to make sure that file exists as well. So we'll say inode t, again, directory inode would be inode from path, given the path. If directory inode id is zero, that means it's invalid, so we don't have it. That would also be return false. The directory does not exist. All right, that's why I add a bunch of white space at the bottom so I can move it up there, <laughs> and then I just forget to delete it later. That makes sense. Okay, if the last inode name in a given path is not a directory, then I also want to error. So if directory inode dot type is not equal to file type directory, we would return false. Not a directory. Set the current directory string in inode to that inode. And I told myself how to do that already, which is nice, but I already got the inode there. Current directory inode will equal that inode, just so it's updated. Resolve path from that. Uh, oh, for the current directory string. And that is in the kernel. Right? No, it's not. Uh, it is somewhere. Is it in this file? <laughs> oh, it's probably just this. Okay, current directory. Well, it's not in there. I think it's in the kernel, is it not? Yeah, so I print out where I'm currently at for the prompt. Yes, okay. So that's why it has a slash to begin with. That makes sense. Update current directly current directory to this newly changed to directory. That seems a bit wordy and nonsense. So we'll just update that. Update the inode, update the string, so that it prints out and we're actually in that path. So I have to resolve the path first, which is why I had that stuff. Um, resolve path in case it is relative. That's why I did that. So I need to update the path name, so, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> I think I have functions to get the name, or I've done this before, but I don't remember where. 
I have last name and path. Well, that's a very simple one. The parent inode. Am I not doing it here? I thought I was getting... Yeah, inode from path, I do this. So I'm doing that kind of stuff. But I have to update a string instead of updating the inode. But I think I have... I have inode for name and directory as well. I'm just trying to I'm trying to see if I had any helper functions to do the, to do this already and I don't. So I could have a, th a thing that says like resolve path or something. I might do that. But I'd have to return an allocated string. So maybe not. Kind of lame. I mean, I can make another thing up here, <laughs> another global which is all right. We'll say resolved path or something. But it needs to be large. We can say we have a maximum file path limit of 255 or something, which we'll have to increase later, but that's that's okay. We'll say max path size, I don't know, 256. That's fine. More than enough for anybody. So this will be file path after resolving dot and dot dot etc if that makes sense but okay let's just say we have some resolved path that we can work with so I can clear that first reset it and then we need to resolve it so how do we do that we have to look through the current path so I suppose I'll do that so while P is not null while while we are not at the end of the path because I'm still using null terminated strings like a like a dummy I should have a string struct by now but that's all right So handle dot dot, handle dot, handle rest. And at the end we'll say, we'll mem copy into current directory. The resolve path, we could probably do string copy. I don't know how large the current directory string is. I guess I don't have one. That's not great. <laughs> I don't have a length. So where, where do I get that? Do I like initially... Oh, that's 1024. Oh, I'm good there. Okay. I mean, I could set that explicitly though, but whatever. That way I can do string end copy. So string length of resolved path. Okay, then I just have to resolve the path. Dot dot. Uh, I'll do that after dot. And I probably want to do star p. Or I could do this within a for loop. That might be a little bit better. Say while p or or while star p. Uh, we'll just say p not equal. The character at p would not be at the end of the string. I'll just do that to be explicit here. Okay, so if the data is dot, we want to handle that. Else dot dot. Which I can say, what is that? P zero. And P1, which I would handle from this. So, I mean, I could handle that first, actually. That would be better. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, if the two characters appear a dot, then I'll be okay. But I did do this before up here. It's a slash skip the directory separator, yes. It's relative, I'll just increase it, or increase by two. 
I guess, what am I really trying to do here? Am I doing more work than necessary? If we have a path, if we're a few folders deep and we change the directory, so let's say we start at root, we have folder A, folder B, and we're in folder B. So if I'm currently there and I give a command, the change directory, you know, dot dot or dot dot slash, I want to go wherever I'm currently at up into folder B. So I need to know where I'm currently at as a path. Because we could do that. We could have just dot, which would do nothing. So I can probably just skip over that, really. For the moment. Else we can have we can have something like change directory. We can have an explicit root go to folder A. We could have something else that says go up one and go into another folder and go on from there. If we go into a folder dot 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 that would go back to folder C. So we need to know where, where our current path is, which I guess would be current directory. So that's already there. So we already know where we're currently at. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. So I would, act, I would actually want to start, get another pointer to the end of the current directory, which would be interesting. So we would need the end of that. That might be interesting. Current's a bit too close. I guess I can say that and I don't want it to be at the start of current directory. So I can do this. <laughs> Which is a bad way of doing it. Get pointer to end of current path. Right, so while we have data there, keep incrementing. When we don't have data, I'll probably want to back up by one. Unless we're at zero. But that'll be okay. Uh, go back before ending null byte. Null terminator. Okay. So given that, I'm iterating through this path, resolving it, and going and doing this path. P, I'm not going to do anything there. It'll increment if I'm at dot dot. This one, I'll probably go up. Right? I can just increment once and continue, because it'll increment twice from doing that. So, yeah, we'll go to the parent directory. This will be current directory, skip over. So if it's that way, then I want to back up the current pointer until I get to the start of the previous directory. So if I'm in, if I'm in folder B and I say to change to go up by one, We'll say this is the current path, right? Then the current pointer would be at the end of this path. If I say to change and go up by one folder, I want to change the current pointer to go back until we get to the previous folder, whether that be root or what have you. So I'll increment P so that it'll increment again and skip the next dot, but I'll probably handle slash as well. So we'll have directory separator skip over okay parent directory skip over set current directory string to end on next parent directory I'll say up by one level Maybe that makes more sense. Probably not. 
well, star current not equals slash current minus minus, right? So it'll go up until it equals the parent directory. We'll increment that by one, continue, because it'll increment again by there. Okay. Current directory, we don't care. We can skip that over. It'll increment by one anyway. So else, what would we be? We'd say go up. We go to folder C. I need better test cases here. All right, so <laughs> trying to think through it doesn't really work. Let's assume current directory is this. And let's say folder A contains folder B and folder C. So given that, if we do something like change directory, we're inside of there, go up by one and go to folder C, with or without the ending slash, we'd go up by one, current directory would be here from this. So it'd be on this ending slash. And then I say go to folder C, then I'd have to go back down. Okay. Else found next folder name. So I need to determine if that is a folder that we can go to. So I guess I'll do that. We need to increment current here. So we'll say while star p is not null and star p is not the folder separator, we can increment. We can increment p and increment current, or increment current and p. So they would equal the same thing here. Actually, no, current would not equal the same thing. I would have to set the data there. So if current is currently on a slash, I'd want to increment it first off. And then until we get to the next one, I want to copy Copy to current directory string. And I know I'm using current directory instead of this resolved path. So if I end up not using this, I'll delete it. I'm just thinking through the logic here. We'll increment until we get there. Um, P would not be on a slash because we would have skipped over that. So until I do that, we'll just set the data as well. The current equals P. P plus plus, current plus plus, or we can do star current plus plus equals star P plus plus. <laughs> if we want to do the old school way of, of doing that and see. Okay. And that would probably iterate along and skip over instead of it being folder B. We'd have folder a slash current would be here, and then it should equal folder c. Then we'd have a null, so that would be okay. I think. So I don't know, we'll try it out. Probably not gonna work, probably a bunch of test cases I'm not handling right now, but that's okay. <laughs> and this would increment past. So I'd say if our current not equal a slash, I'm gonna make it a slash. So we'll always end current directory path string with a slash. And then I'll end with a null as well. I'll terminate new string. Okay, and then I won't have to do this actually. We can just update the path in place. <laughs> uh, that seems okay. Maybe I don't need resolve path. I might add this back in a bit. I guess I'll keep the path size there, but. Uh, okay, so maybe that'll handle basic things right now. Probably won't handle very many basic things, but. We will see. Current undeclared, of course, because you're a cur. You cad, you cur. All right, so we have this directory here. 
So what if I just change directory to the current directory? Oh yeah, CA, it's chdir. Then it equals a null. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. I suppose if the path is only one character long, I don't want to do anything. I can do that. I can handle that. If string in compare path, um, just a slash, I suppose, two, just those two characters, really. Then we can leave. We can just return true. We're already in. Well, we're not in root. We'd have to change to root if I wanted to do that. So that would be a special case. If it's only a dot, we'll return true. We're not going anywhere. Okay, else we'll do this other stuff. If we want to go to root, we can go to root, but that might just be a special edge case I have to handle there. All right, so change directory here. I don't know why it equals a null, though. Do I not fill that out? Is that not what I'm doing here? It would be dot null explicitly. So two bytes should do that and the null. Uh, hmm. Am I sending it argv1? I am sending it argv1. Yes. Maybe it isn't ended with... Well, it should be ended with a null terminated stream. I'm not sure why it would be null after that if it's not going on. Uh, let's see. I'll know if it goes on or not with that. It does. Okay, so why does it go on? I'd have to see what path is, I suppose. Am I stupid? I mean, the answer is yes, but why is this not... <laughs> why is this not procking? Ah. Uh, whatever, man. Just write it out. What is the difference? My string compare? Obviously my string compare. This is why you don't write your own C standard library. Because it doesn't work. <laughs> I do while length is less than zero. And string one, string two. I know this isn't a good solution, but that's what I'm doing. Oh, I wasn't checking against zero, and that's why. I'm, I'm stupid. This is true, right? This is true, so it's saying if it's not zero, return true. I want to check if it is zero. Why do I do these things when I need to not do them in sleep? All right. So I'm in the current directory. It doesn't matter. We're not going to do anything with that. Okay. What if I change to slash? It says null. Why does it go to null? I'm probably backing up too far when I do this. Or here. This would be after the slash. I back up. That should equal the slash. If it's there, it continues. And then it should end. If it's not equal to slash, then make it equal to that, and then set it to null. Is that bad? I mean, that should be all right. I guess I'd have to check here. Uh, it's a slash. Okay. This says if it's not equal. Oh, but I'm setting it here. What if it is equal? I don't want to set it to be a null. I want to say... <laughs> uh, if it's not equal to slash, set it equal to a slash and do... do plus one. There we go. Null terminate after where we're currently at. Always. That would make more sense. 
You gotta have an off by one error, it's C. You're required to have at least five off by one errors every hour. That's true. So now those two test cases work. That works. Okay. All right, moment of truth. Let's make directory A. We have it at the bottom. Let's change directory to directory A. It did not update the string. And it didn't seem to do anything, so that's always good. Because I'm not counting if it's in the current directory, that's probably why. If I change directory slash directory A, then that doesn't work either. If I change directory, <laughs> if I do, that doesn't do anything either. Okay. Well, we can change directory to ourselves initially, and that's the only thing that works. So that's good. I figure this code would work, but it's not working. I'd have to get the new inodes and everything as well, and I'm not doing that either, am I? I'm getting the inode from the path. <laughs> Does this walk the path? This does walk the path. I know for name and directory. Okay. So I'm just trying to do string processing and see, and that's why I'm having a bad go of it. Um, how do I not stall and, and try to move forward here? Probably with this. This stuff is not correct. It seems like. Oh, I'm not setting the new directory string anyway, but the inode should be set regardless. I mean, I am setting it because it equals the current directory. Never mind. So that should be setting the string values as I go through here. So let's do this. All right, you know, we made directory A. So if I change directory into slash directory A, oh, it doesn't go to that part of the code. That's interesting. That's interesting. So I do slash directory A, it say slash continue P plus plus. This would be false. This should be false. This should be, well, not equal and not equal. That should be true but it never gets to this point. <laughs> so what's the deal with that? What's the deal? Unless P is incorrect. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's print this stuff here. Current. Current P. Well, that should be equal to the path. Uh, we'll just do path. Mm, error failed. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm not getting the path here because this inode path doesn't exist yet. So that's actually expected behavior. That's actually fine. All right, current and path are correct. Does it get to this point in the code? Should I do not print F debugging? Yes. Oh, that didn't work either. Oh, because it doesn't know the inode for if there's nothing there? No, that has directory A. I'm very flabbergasted. Oh, because this is true. This needs to be not true. Because if it's zero, then they do equal. Uh, 
Life is pain sometimes. A lot of the times. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you write the right code the first time, then the code will work the first time, and you won't spend time debugging if you just wrote the right thing to begin with, you know what I mean? Okay, so that doesn't work, obviously. That doesn't work either. And I know we're in the right directory, because these are correct, and this is right, but I can't go up. And slash, I guess I just don't do anything, because I just do continue, okay. I should at least change the directory to that if I equal that, yeah, because I've done that before. Like way up here. Somewhere. I'm pretty sure all I do is set the directory to there, yeah, this thing, this, yeah. Where I do this stuff. Just set the current inode to the root inode. I suppose I should do that. Set the directory to... Oh, I do update it here. I thought. Whatever. If the first character is a slash. Current directory inode equals root inode. We'll be going to that. And we've determined it does exist already. So I'll just do that. Okay. If explicitly specified. And then we'll do this, and if it ends right after that, we'll continue immediately, that should be okay. All right. So made directory A, change directory into A, that works, we have those. Change directory slash. Why does that not go back to root? <laughs> That's the path I was given. It should go here. Of course, I immediately set it to a directory inode, so that's not true. But I guess if I get it from the path, that should be root anyway, shouldn't it? So never mind. I can make sure, though. Oh, test cases are always fun. Path inode 10, hey, got that here, so change directory root. I know we're going back to root, because it went to 1. So that's correct. Guess we go to continue. Oh, because I end at the end of current. And it, it is a slash, so it just does nothing to the path, because I already end in the slash. Interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is why I had that different, like, resolved path thing I was figuring out. I'm trying to update the directory string in place, and that's probably giving me a bunch of, uh, other words. Other choice words. But this does say immediately end, but I guess I'm not going back. That's why. However... It doesn't seem to change the inode either, even though that proved that it does know the new inode. If I do slash, see, it doesn't go back to the root inode here. That's interesting to me. Maybe I need to set an update? We know the inode here, though. It's, it's set. It's set from there. I guess because print directory gives a path, is that why? Uh, it's given a path, okay, that's why. I'm not given an inode, which I probably should send that an inode instead. 
I don't know. That's why it doesn't update. Technically, we are in the root directory there, but since the path isn't updated, that's not right. Because string processing is fun. So how would I fix that? I could cut this off every time if I wanted. But it depends. Hmm. I guess if we're doing it explicitly, then I should just set it equal to the path. Right? If we start at root... I'll say changing to explicit path starting at root as opposed to evaluating against the current path, which is what this stuff is doing. I still have to do similar stuff, but I could start it at root. But we could still have similar like dot and dot dot things. But then again, I'm setting the folders here along the path if I need to. So I think I just have to update because that's not updating right now to start at root. And we're setting the current directory there anyway. Hmm. Else, start path from current directory path. So I guess I'll do that. Let me do this. We'll do that if we're getting the current one. If we're starting at root, we'll just have current equal the path. That might be all right. Um, no, but it has to equal current directory, doesn't it? <laughs> so I could do that. I could do that regardless. I'll just set it to that regardless. Star current equals path. And yeah. Will that be all I need to do? Because if we go through this and evaluate, I think that'll be okay. We'll fill out the folders along the way. We'll evaluate these. Dot and dot dot, maybe. This might be iffy with that. And then it, if it's only a slash for root, then it would equal the slash and do that, and that would be okay. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be janky. All right. Oh, okay, that went back to slash. That's good. Still, here's okay. Here's okay. We have directories there. Uh, that removed the initial slash, so that's an error, although we should be able to fix that by doing that. So what if I'm in directory A and I say to go to where I currently am? I should start at the slash and go on, but that's not what happened. That would equal the slash, it would set the directory inode, which is probably where I'm currently at, maybe that's wrong, but... I set it to the path we're going to. Hmm. That's fine. Okay. So I did slash DRA, and I'm in DIRA. And we continue past the slash. We don't have this. It's not a dot. We move past the slash. It should set it equal to the same thing, I would think. But that is not what happened. I don't think. Assignment to character from character pointer 621. That would probably fix some issues, wouldn't it? <laughs> if I set it equal to the slash. I mean, I could just set it equal to that, but. Do I have any other issues here? Nope. Yeah, that would have been bad. That could have been the cause of some uh, some troubles there. All right, we're in there. 
yeah, that's probably the whole the whole issue there. Yeah, dot 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 by itself doesn't do anything. Interesting. Dot dot slash doesn't either. Slash by itself does. Okay, so why is that? Well, current not equal slash. If I do dot dot. Um, I go to the end of the path. Oh, it in, and it equals a slash to begin with. That's why. That's why. But this should be... Okay. For ending null. Uh, I don't. I don't like my way of coding right now. But if it equals, if it equals a slash, we need to back that up. If it's not only root. If it is only root, then we'll have skipped over it. So that's fine. Uh, we need to back it up first, and then wait until it's not. So I could do while that. But I don't want to do that unless we're on a directory separator. Go before current separator first. All right, there, there will be other test cases. I should try to write some test cases for making and changing directories so I can put them within like the test suite to run and then I can compare paths and things. I should do that. I'll think about that, you know, after this, after this video, of course. I also like that as long as the prefix works, the other things don't. That's not great. <laughs> but directory A, we have that stuff. And dot dot works if I do that. Because <laughs> it would have ended on the slash, so I need to go back up one and then go up. Which makes sense, you know. Ah, uh, but okay. So... The next moment of truth would be, what if, when I can do that, what if I can go up by one and then back into A, that doesn't do anything, which is good. So, what if I make and we go down multiple directories? Well, it won't exist, so I don't have that yet. That would be a little more code. I'm not going to worry about that right now, at least to start off. But if I'm within directory A, and I make another one in here, so directory B. Okay, it makes it within the directory, that's good. And then from this directory, I go into directory B, it, that looks good. Dot dot goes back to A, hey, we're getting somewhere. Dot dot dot. Directory A, directory B. A, did we actually figure this out? Go up by two. I think we're onto something here. If I do the directory command with directory A, directory B, I think that's correct. Yes, because directory A would be 192. And that's in there. Hey, I think I got somewhere <laughs> and it only took oh, less than two hours. That's a That's a goal. Oh, okay. So very basic making and changing of directories. That's good. That is what I wanted to accomplish. I am happy with that. And we don't we have not broken reboots yet. Although it seems like expanding the kernel means I have to add extra extra bits for some reason within the data blocks, but anyway, I got to research that and see why the make disk has that discrepancy. We could also do this like in Unix, it's what make directory slash p or whatever, we could do that automatically if the user wants. It depends. We'd have to take in more than just the path here. We'd have to take in an array of things, right, for commands, the argv, which is what I should be doing. I'm just kind of fudging that for a command array right now. So making things worse for the future, I am good at that. But at a basic level, this works for making a directory, so I'm kind of happy with that. Now, I don't have rename, I don't have remove, I don't have these other types of things. But we do at least have this stuff right now. I don't have, oh yeah, I do. Let those be one, okay. And I set the new string, technically I resolve and stuff's okay. 
add a separator at the end. I am doing that, set the new string value. All right. I consider that to be a success, and I'm happy with that. So I do want to change printf to look a little bit better. Change prompt I can do very simply, but maybe on the next one to start off with so I can get my brain working. But if we have make and change directory, we might be able to revamp make disk um, some more to sort of set an initial file system. I don't have like a create or touch command though, so I might want to make those. I want to, I might want to make that first if I don't have one already. I don't remember actually, that's a good point. I don't remember, which I, I need to. Do I have... I don't have like a create file command yet, probably. I do not. Interesting. So I probably want to do that. That would be good. Make create file command, e.g. touch or similar. I don't have pipes, so I can't do like type null, you know, like Windows does it, or just, you know, touch and uh, redirect the output with a caret, right? Or um, the greater than sign. <laughs> I might do printf on the next one. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. I might do these two things on the next one. I may simplify file system, maybe not. Screen scroll back I want to add. Setting an initial file system I want to add, I might work towards that. I think a create file command would be good, and then I can look at doing delete file directory and rename. So more file system stuff I might do on the next one. But I'll probably start off, before I make like an ed editor, I'll make like a basic create file. And then... Maybe like a write command to write a string or something, or echo to echo a string. I don't know. But if I can make something to create a file, that would be good. Just a basic touch command to create a blank file. Then I want to be able to type into it, but if I have an editor, I can just write the editor. So I might go into that. But I made making change directory, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> Even if it took me a little longer than I want, and I'm talking too much right now. So I'm going to end this. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully I made enough sense and wasn't too scatterbrained. So I started I started with, you know, big caffeine energy and then that went away. So now I'm tired and I should go to bed anyway. But thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Maybe more file system stuff. We'll see. Maybe starting an editor. So if I make blank files, then I can edit blank files. And I set up an initial file system, we'll be on our way to one one hundredth of what original Unix could do. So <laughs> we'll go on from here. I'll see you then if you want. So thanks for watching again. See you on the next one. Cheers.